Bringing the Chaos. And I'm Goblin in Green. And welcome to the Marvel Movie Room for Marvel Month. Yeah, today is, is Ant-Man. Uh, one of the movies that people didn't think was going to happen, but in the end did. Yeah. Because, if, remember, it was shown at Comic-Con. Yeah. And uh, kind of test footage, and that got really popular, so they decided to make a movie. Yeah. So there it is. Here's, here's the movie that they made. Yeah, and it looked... It was a pretty good movie. Yeah. It wasn't, like, spectacular, but it was pretty good. Okay. okay. Let's start with plot. So basically what happens is Paul Rudd uh, did a crime, and it was like a just crime. Like they, go, they, they pretty much shoved this in your face, that he's a hero! Yeah. It was heroic, <laughs> right? A bunch of times. Uh, but basically he got arrested for, for taking money from very shady business people and yeah. giving it back. Exactly. He Robin Hooded it. Yeah, he, he burglared it. Yeah. Not robbed, because, oh my god, that means you killed it's, somebody. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, he gets put in prison, and he comes back out, and his friends are talking about this, this new score that they, that they heard of. <clears throat> so he breaks in to Hank, Pym, uh, to Hank Pym's house, and finds out that there's actually no money, and there's just an Ant-Man suit. So he takes the Ant-Man suit, because... Because you get, we need a movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he takes the Ant-Man suit, and, uh... And basically puts it on, tries it out, and Hank Pym conveniently is on the thing when he puts on the suit. Yeah. He's like, hey, doesn't the suit whatever. So he basically kind of tests, he tests Paul Rudd in breaking into the house, yeah. and then he tests Paul Rudd as Ant-Man. And then he decides to train him because his old, uh, his old uh, uh, student yeah, his old ma made a, is trying to make an Ant-Man serum. Uh, like his, and call it Yellow Jack and make it very militarized. Yeah. So what he wants to do is he wants to use this new Ant-Man to... Uh, he wants to use this, this new Ant-Man to break in and uh, basically trash all the data and destroy yeah. everything so that they can't use the Ant-Man serum. Or, yeah. or, or any variation of the Ant-Man serum. He kind of wants to put them back years and years. Uh, and uh, they eventually do, and this leads to a whole confrontation with Yellow Jacket and yeah. it's, it's, Ant-Man. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty good, it's an okay plot. There's some messy parts, definitely. I think yeah. Goblin and both felt it was a little bit messy in some areas. No, like, it, wasn't, it wasn't really messy, it was just like... There was shit that shouldn't have been there. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Okay, so the beginning scene was Stark and uh, Agent Carter and yeah, that's all fine. of them. That, that's fine. That, keep that in the movie. That's actually a really cool scene because he gives some backstory, which we desperately need in these Marvel movies, to Founding Shield. I would have loved an, a movie on that, maybe. That would have been cool. Yeah, if they, cool. If, they did a, if they did a movie about... Soviet, if, no, if they did a movie about Soviet era Ant Man and kind of t showing you how, like Captain America: The First Avenger, yeah, but they did with Ant Man, I think it would have been great, and then you could have some cameos, like you well, should have had yeah. that after the Captain America movie. That would have yeah. worked. Um, and then it could set up to the next movie where it's, you already have the Avengers and just yep. go through exactly. that, and it gives a little bit more backstory because trying to shoehorn in Ant Man into the past of yeah. S.H.I.E.L.D. is just a little awkward. Yeah, it is. It's very awkward because he's kind of just like, what? Okay, so ant -Man was there, but he's never been mentioned before in any of the other Marvel movies at all. Yeah. The serum is never been mentioned. This is the first time it's no. mentioned. All right, let's just go with it. Black Widow doesn't know about the <clears throat> whole military projects. No one knows about the military projects because it's, apparently it's a rumor, but they have footage of fucking yeah. an Ant-Man. Yeah. In... All right, so let's get into what should be not there. I don't think, like, okay, so the friend should not be picking up Sam Lang. From the prison. He shouldn't be there. What should have happened is to speed up the plot and make the plot more straightforward and easier so it's not so complicated is uh, just have uh, Hank Pym out waiting for him in the, in the car when he gets out from prison. Yeah. No one's there to pick up Sam. It makes him seem lonely. It makes him seem like there's no one in his life that's there for him anymore. Right? That's kind of a and cool... Then Hank Pym rolls yeah. up in like a pimp car. He's like, I need to talk to you. Get in now. And yeah. he gets in and he explains the whole thing to him. And he gives him, he's like, you have one day to decide if you're going to join. And if you don't... Then we go on our way and you don't get a second chance. And then so, then uh, Sam goes and visits his daughter because it's her birthday. Yeah. yeah. Her, and then there we go. We lead up there. Get rid of the friend. I mean, like, yeah, you can have his friend. Maybe have a quick little scene with him. But we don't need, like, fucking 20 minutes of him and his friend fucking so around. Dumb. And then him fucking around at an ice cream store trying to... Oh, by the way, thanks, Baskin Robbins, for supporting yeah. the Ant-Man movie. Yeah, great. I'm so glad you guys were there to support. We don't need that. That's all a waste of our time. Just get to the plot. Get to the point of the yeah. story that we care about. And uh, it's cleaner. Yeah, it's, yeah, you know, honestly, <clears throat> guys, just get to the point. I, I, I get that you like, I don't know what's up with Marvel. Yeah. After, after like, I think Thor yeah. was the first time I ever saw the spawning of the superhero with his group of queeps. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. Thor has two groups of queeps, and Ant-Man has his own group of queeps. Mm -hmm. And 
I just, it's unnecessary. These yeah. are characters that you don't need. Yeah. I These are characters that are there for the sake of, hey, it's funny, he's Hispanic, he tells like yeah. relatable jokes to Hispanic yeah. people. This guy's Russian, you know? Yeah. And, it's like, it's like I don't care. I mean, like, you could have made the guy his roommate. Done. That's it. That's all you need. That's it. And then he decides to join and all that fun. And then the rest of the movie can go yeah. on. It'd be fine that way. Okay, so let's get into Sam Lang and his character. Yeah. So, uh, for me, uh, Sam Lang did, you know, Paul Rudd did amazing. You know, he did. Iron Man. He was phenomenal. He, he did He did a good job. I, I know generally in the comics, Sam is supposed to be kind of like, yeah. kind of like Iron Man in a way. He's supposed to be jokey and whatever. Yeah, well, he's supposed to be, he's supposed to be Hank Pym also. Yeah. And lots of people, there was some anger when it was announced that Hank Pym was not going to be Iron Man. Yeah. And but, like we've said before, they're lucky enough that they did get Hank Pym yeah. in the first place. They, they sort of gave you Hank Pym as, as Ant-Man, just a little tease. But they also gave you a new Ant-Man, which is cool. I like the relationship between the two. I like how they kind of pull Batman Beyond off, yeah. where, you know, you got Hank Pym, this awesome scientist. And it makes sense that he would be more of a scientist than a hero from They even say that at the beginning. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, uh, it, it really... It, yeah. You know... Uh, Sam Lang, I really like the family angle, the daughter angle. I like how he's been in prison. I really like this. It makes the character very emotional, especially him and his daughter. Because he really loves his daughter. You can totally tell that in the movie. You can see he even has a nickname for her. It's cute. It's awesome. It's great. I feel emotion for this character. I'm rooting for him. Yeah. I think you had the similar feelings as I did. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did. Uh, <clears throat> the first time, especially the first time I watched it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, yes. Like, because Paul Rudd was very, very human in this. Yes. You, you can feel that he wants a second chance. That he wants redemption. And that's really powerful, I think, in this movie. Yeah. Uh, but honestly, uh, let's let's move on to... Um, Hank Pym. Hank Pym. Uh, he did well as the old mentor. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I could see him working with with uh, Howard Stark yes, and, definitely. and Agent Carter and stuff. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. And it, it's kind of weird, though, that he said, like, it, it's a little awkward. It's like, he leaves S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm -hmm. and then he goes and makes a PIM research yeah. thing and S.H.I.E.L.D. has, like, nothing to say about it. Yeah. Like, this research area that, that you know, it's like... You'd think S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. would have something to say. Yeah. <laughs> because they wanted this research and he's just doing it by himself now yeah. and they're not getting a piece of it. Exactly. I really got to say the actor was phenomenal. Yeah. Frank the guy I thought was perfect. I think he fit the role what they needed perfectly. I like the mentor role just as you did. Mm. Uh, I liked how how he, the, how he explained the suit and stuff. It was very well explained too. Yeah. How it worked and stuff. And I liked, again, I love the flashbacks. That was cool. And for Ant-Man it's really important to explain how he works. Yes. Because, um... It, you gotta know what the suit can and can't do. Yeah. That's the basics of it, I think. Because lots of movies that have powers or magic, they don't explain the limits that you can and can't do with. This, it's clearly explained. Yeah. Um, and, and that's basically, you know, yeah, that's pretty much it with him. Let's move on to his, uh, uh, Hank Pym's daughter. Yeah. Hope. Hope. Uh, she was okay. She really reminded me of Black Widow, honestly. She did, yes. Like, I was like, I was like... <laughs> Totally reminded. She was like martial arts skill. She was cool and cool yeah. and, and cool headed and stuff like that. Yeah. And and you know she took everything pretty seriously. Yeah. She really reminded me of Black Widow. I liked her because she wasn't as funny. She brought some seriousness to this movie, which yeah. we desperately need in the Marvel universe. And I love the relationship between her father and her. Yeah. Because yeah. you can tell they're broken. Something has happened. To this family. Well, yeah, she fucked him all. Yeah, and it, and it hints to it throughout the entire movie until they finally, yeah. everything goes out in the open. And it's great. I think it was really well done showing that something happened. And it kind of hints at you and leaves some mystery for most yeah. of the movie. And you're waiting for this big reveal and you get it. And it's great. And I think it was done very well. Yeah. And he got Wasp, which was yeah. great. Yeah, that was actually one of my favorite scenes was when I was talking about him and Wasp. Mm -hmm. That was one of my favorite scenes. And it did lead into the later plot yeah. thing, you know. It, it worked. Yeah. It really worked with me. Well, let's just move on to Darren Cross. All right. So the main villain of the, I really like this angle. I like how he was he was supposed to be the protege. He was supposed to become the next Hank Pym. Yeah. He he was trained by Hank, and that's really cool because Sam is kind of the replacement. You know, I kind of felt like he was there because he was better. You know, and Darren got angry and he left and he took control of the company and he built the suit himself. Yeah. And he suffered brain problems from the suit, which is cool that they actually take the time to explain yeah. it. Yeah. Um, uh, for me, like, I, I, I at least, like, un, with, with him, I felt that his conflict with, with, with Ant-Man and Hank was, I, I feel like, um, I, I, I don't know, uh, I feel like his conflict with them is pretty justified. Yeah. Uh, sometimes with these Marvel movies, sometimes you feel the villains are very unjustified yeah. in why they're doing it. Yeah. But with him, it's like, yeah, okay, and then there's the brain thing, so yeah. whatever. 
Uh, he did really, as an aside, he did really remind me of Lex Luthor. Yeah, yeah. I'm super sorry, you guys. Yeah. Like, come on. He's, He's a rich billionaire that built a suit. To fight a person who he thinks, who, who, who is better than him. Yeah. And he wants to take down a peg. He has a lot of the Lex Luthor mentality. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say this comes from the comics, but this comes from the yeah. movie for me. And as a Lex fan, yeah, it's like this guy really. Honestly, I think you should have played Lex. Like they should have just called him Lex and Justice yeah, League. Definitely, my but, biggest. Uh, problem, however, Superman. Sorry. No problem. My biggest problem with it is how easy it is for Darren Cross to figure out what the plan is, like against them. Yeah. Like he's able to figure out who Sam Lang is, figure out his entire life and everything. And I know he was in the house and stuff and saw the, the daughter, but come on, that's such a, that's such a lazy way to kind of just be like. And now the villain knows what you're planning. Yeah, it's so... It doesn't feel... They left the front door open. It feels like super forced, doesn't it? Yes, it, it is. It's like now his family's in peril. It's like... What? What the fuck? I don't know. I, I sort of like slash dislike his whole trouble making the Anna formula. Yeah. Because, like, for me, sometimes it, it feels justified he would have problems making the formula. Yeah. But for other times, other times it feels like there's a scene with him testing out... There's, like, what, three scenes yeah. with him testing out the formula where yeah, it doesn't yeah. work? Yeah, exactly. It feels like those scenes are there to fill time. Yeah, exactly. And I show that this villain is having trouble. Yeah, it's like, I know, you show one scene of him having trouble and then figuring it out. Well, not really figuring it out, but... Like, you know what I would have done instead of him creating a pharma? He breaks into Hank's house because he can't figure it out and steals a bottle of the formula. Because there's plenty of them. We saw yeah. them. And he steals one of the formulas. It's like you don't... And he's able to copy it and he, stuff. He's, and then they he, the he somehow knows where... He somehow knows where Paul... Where uh, Ant-Man's family yeah. is. But he can't figure out where Hank Pym is hiding his formula. Yeah. Well, he researches them and it's just so it's lazy. Just... It's so lazy. It's like, what? I would have just had him break into Hank Pym's house, steal the formula, right? Yeah. And then just copy it. Copy that. So yeah. that you can make an army. Because he wasn't able to figure it out. And yeah. that, I think that would have been better. Because then it would have shown that Hank is only the one able to make the formula. Mm -hmm. And that's great. Yeah. And then with the death of Yellow Jacket, it dies the formula. Oh my god. my god. I hate it when they kill off villains. Yes. It's so... <clears throat> it's infuriating. Yeah, I know. It's so pit. I'm so pissed. Because it's like, Yellow Jacket is, is his main <laughs> villain. It's like, it's like if they did a Batman and just killed the Joker. Media. Yep. I get they did it in Tim Burton one, but come on now. Come yeah, on. Tim Burton knew he wasn't coming. <laughs> the yeah. Batman the Jerk. Come on. Like, I mean, oh my god, I fucking hate it. They waste villains. Yeah. And then they give them, like, shitty motivations. And then there's. They, they either poor, they, they poorly handle villains, um, and then they just kill them. It's like, great, thanks. Guys. I mean, like, I'll give him this. Granted, yes, there was a sure. problem with his suit. Like, he had brain problems because he uh, yeah. only Hank was able to make the helmet that would protect his brain function. And since he didn't have that helmet and he didn't know about it, his brain was actually being affected by the serum. And that's cool, yeah. but that's not enough for me. No. As a last thing before ratings, I also think I have another counter idea. Yeah. I think it'd be cool if uh, Hank Pym... I, I still want to keep the training angle yeah. because I, I do like that. <laughs> I, I think it'd be awesome if um, Hank Pym took notice of the Avengers yeah. and was like, I think it's time for Ant-Man to come back, yeah. right? So he finds someone qualified to be Ant Man. Yeah. And he's like, I'm gonna train you, and then you're gonna, because I know the Starks, so yeah. we can put you in as an Avenger, because I think the world needs Ant Man again, right? Yeah. So he trains this guy to become the new Ant Man, right? Yeah. And uh, and you know, in this training, he tells him he's like, yeah, this formula, blah blah blah. And then um, like I think at around maybe the quarter portion of the first, it's 25 minutes, maybe yeah. 30. Um, uh, his old apprentice that they talk about during yeah. the movie comes in and kidnaps Hank Pym oh. and makes him remake the formula that for would him. Be cool too. So now this new Ant Man has to test his abilities with Hank's daughter now yeah. and test them and try to break out Hank, yeah. who's being forced to make the thing. I think that would that too would be also cool as well. It would be like kind of like the new Ant Man's final test yeah. to becoming an yeah. Avenger, I yeah, guess. Exactly. Saving your mentor, saving this old guy who exactly. is who used to be as like. Kind of like around on the same level as like yeah, definitely. you know he was basically there was there was Captain America mm -hmm. and then in the Sil and in the Soviet War there was Ant Man, Man right yes exactly the myth of the Ant Man it, it was it would totally work and play to this yeah. movie's favor but they don't go with it. we should talk about the end quickly he ends up going subatomic and he goes like through the void and whatever the same thing what happened to Wasp and I do like this scene because it shows that he he has a little bit of his brain yeah. himself you know he's able to figure things out this is. In any situation, anyone would be freaking out. You'd be mm -hmm. freaking out. So what he did was he grabbed the giant little disc, which I do like the idea of, and he stuck it in his belt, and he was able to grow, and it kind of shows that there's hope for finding Wasp, and I would like to yeah. see a Wasp return. Maybe the daughter becomes Wasp. That would be cool. 
be cool. That's the next movie, apparently. Yeah. yeah, and I definitely think they leave potential for a second Ant-Man. I would love to see one in the Soviet. That would be cool, but I don't think we're going to get no, that sad thing. Uh, there is going to be one called Ant-Man and Wasp yeah. is the next movie. The so, next Ant-Man movie. So there you guys go. Um, quickly, too, as well, I want to talk about this sort of forced Avengers thing, too. Oh, yeah. With, Fal with Falcon. I think that could have just been eliminated from the movie. We don't need some so Avengers cameo. Conveniently, conveniently, and this is also to try and get... This is also trying to kind of have have asked explain how Ant Man is eligible to be in the Avengers too. It's like he beat Falcon, so he's good enough. Falcon is worthless. Especially if you would have beat Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, one of the big guys, I would have been like, all right, cool. He was able to beat them. Yeah. But no, he beat Falcon. I don't give a fuck about. Do you give a fuck about Falcon? I don't fuck no about one gives Falcon. a fuck. No one gives a fuck about Falcon. I get that you're on a budget yeah. and shit. Blah. But then don't even bother. Just have him break into a storage unit and get the shit. Or don't even bother having the shit. <laughs> I also like how, like, conveniently, so uh, Tony remakes this whole building that his dad owned yeah. and moved it around and did all these renovations mm -hmm. for the Avengers and conveniently kept this old piece of technology yeah. and didn't move it anywhere else. Yeah. That's very convenient of Tony. I like how easy, how easily it was for Sam to find the tech, too. He yeah. just goes in the garage for like two seconds, finds it, comes out. All right, cool. I'm also curious as to who Falcon is talking to on the phone. Yeah. Right? Like, who's he talking to? Is there just like some guy at a security desk eating donuts is talking to Falcon? Is We don't know. Well, I don't know. But anyways, uh, yeah, that's pretty much our kind of stance yeah. on that so far. But All right. let's get into ratings. Uh, uh, for me, this movie was strong in certain areas, but lacked in a lot of areas. I agree. Uh... Some things were just dead weight. This movie felt like it had a lot of dead weight that needed to be cut off. They needed to really trim the fat on this movie. Uh, and Better to me, editing. and and to me, like, uh, I honestly want to just give this movie a six. I thought there was a lot of potential in it, and the effects for the Ant Man stuff was very well done. Mm -hmm. They had a real the effects team had a really good sense of scale yes. in doing Ant Man. The cameras were all at a lower angle, and the effects made everything look bigger than... I think the effects were really good, and I liked Paul Rudd. I liked... I liked basically all the main characters, with the exception of the villain. Mm -hmm. uh, I liked them all. Um, and I think this movie did succeed in making it possible for there to be an Ant-Man movie, so... For a sequel. Good job. So I'm going to say six, yeah, six out of ten. I think I'm going to go six point two. Not very high. I was going to go six... But I did enjoy, one of the reasons I really enjoyed this movie was the fight scenes, especially the briefcase one. That one was one of my yeah. favorite fight scenes. I love the Mento and stuff. That's yeah. all great. The cell phone and the music. That's all funny. It was funny, but it worked with the movie. Yeah. It was great. Uh, yeah, this, this movie should have been cut better. They should have really, they should have sat down and gone, okay, what needs to be shown? Okay, anyways... This is Anarchy Bringing the Chaos. And I'm Goblin and Green. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you like this, subscribe and like it. Comment below what you thought about Ant-Man. If it was your favorite Marvel movie, least favorite, what you would have rated it. And if you're looking forward to Ant-Man 2 with Wasp. And if you like, uh, if you would have preferred Hank Pym over yeah. Sam. Alright, thank you guys. Bye. See you guys.